All right, hi everybody. We are here in front of the Golden Corral Buffet. So why are we doing this? Well, first of all, you can't go to Vegas without going to a buffet. And second of all, it can be so difficult for people with diabetes. And why, why is that? You know what? The choices are so plentiful. It's the foods you don't normally eat. You can eat all you want. And I think it's one of the hardest things for anybody who have weight problems or diabetes or both to go through and, and, and survive. Yeah. So Steve and I are going to go in there and we're going to pick out our food. And our, our, our intent is not to be goody two shoes about this, you know, pick out all these, you know, diabetes friendly things that we might not actually eat. We're going to go and try to get foods that we actually like with, a, you know, an air of things that might be diabetes friendly. Yeah. And we're going to have our good friend and colleague, Jenny Luna, who is an endocrinologist with an interest in nutrition. Later on, she's going to critique and explain uh, what are some of the good choices we made and what are some of the better choices we made. So why are we not doing it inside? Well, technically we're not allowed to film in there. So we're gonna go in and get our food and try to covertly kind of film some of this on our iPhone. So hopefully you guys can go on this journey with us, but whether that goes well or not, we're gonna come out with our food and then get evaluated on it. You know, I hope you were gonna comment on my I shirt. I am starving. Yeah. Well, tell me about I, your shirt. I got this shirt because I'm gonna eat like a lumberjack. Fantastic. So I picked it up. <laughs> All right, come on with us. All right. Okay, everybody, I had to come into the bathroom to record this because the filming got cut off by the management here at Golden Corral. Um, but I just wanted to tell you that everything is going well. Um, so far, it looks like we're not going to have to do any jail time, but we'll see. Um, it's been tough out there. Picking healthy options went out the window quick. Very, very hungry. Um, went right for the fried chicken. It's going to not go over well with Dr. Jenny Luna, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. All right, here's somebody coming, so I got to go. All right, we got our food. The Absolutely did not want us filming in there. We've talked to several managers. Um, so we got our food. We're freaking starving. Let's go back to the office and finally eat. What do you say, Steve? Yeah, let's show you what we picked out. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay, so we are back now in the TCOAD office. We got all of our food. We plated it here back from Golden Corral. And again, you know, the point of this whole exercise is... Um, you know, buffets are fun. They're, they're mm -hmm. fun to go to, yeah. um, but they can be difficult with the amount of food, the choices, etc. And we, it was an interesting experience that I think we both just had that we'll talk about of choices we made, why we made them. But, but before we get into that, we wanted to introduce our special guest. So Jenny, introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name is Dr. Luna, um, and I, uh, I'm an endocrinologist. I uh, focus on taking care of patients that struggle with obesity with a strong interest on nutrition. So it's a pleasure to be here and just take a look at what you guys came up with. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> and um, so first of all, since we got it to go, it was a little bit different than you, how you might actually normally typically, you know, handle a buffet where you would get a plate, come back and eat it, get the next one. Mm -hmm. So we had to pick out everything with one go and they actually charge you by the pound. Um, mm -hmm. So we got 12 pounds of food here, so six pounds each, which sounds like a lot, uh -huh. but when you look at it, I don't know, what do you think? You know what, I, I think you, you made that point earlier. It's so imp important that if I was there and I ate a little salad first, which we'll talk about, mm -hmm. I may not have picked the exact same thing or the amount. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing... Jenny, we're going <laughs> to look at what I picked. Knowing that Jenny's going to be here. I, 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 I probably picked less... Uh, than I would have, but yeah. I really tried to pick the food I liked. Yeah. And you know what the hardest thing was? Filling up those to-go containers to bring the food here and not being able to take a bite. Yeah. Mm. And I did eat a hush puppy no, in the car. I, I did too. I almost I, went at the thing. I, I almost the choked on it. Those are, those are exactly difficult what to I resist. Ate. I was looking around because I thought the guy, because they were already furious at us for filming, and then I was eating that, and they were looking at me. I um, ate a couple little fried things too. I don't know what they were, <laughs> but they were small. But anyways, so... You know, if you only go to a buffet once a year or twice a year, like, don't listen to anything we're going to say. Right. For God's sakes, go for it. Enjoy right. yourself. Um, but this is more about kind of how to handle the unpredicted when you, you know, you don't necessarily know what you're going to eat. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go through it kind of plate by plate. What I would have gotten for my first plate, what Steve would have gotten for his first plate, and then kind of our second plate. 
and Jenny kind of chiming in on maybe other choices we could have made, maybe things that are good, not bad, but like, you know, less diabetes friendly. So let's dive into it. Yeah, you know, I would just say I, t I talked to several friends and told them what we're going to do today, and they all said the same thing. Going to a buffet is so difficult and they always walk out in food coma because yeah. you end up eating way too much and maybe this is a good way to do it well the first thing i'll say is like so i basically didn't eat breakfast we went there for lunch i was starving i did the kind of like obligatory like three loops before i even picked something <laughs> yeah and then i dove in and so the first thing that i got and i'll just i'll explain my whole plate jenny and then you can kind of yeah. Like my process with like how you this really happened. Think this much when yeah. you go to a buffet? Well, I did. I went through like I would like really like there was there was different stations: the salad, the meats, right. the was. tacos, right. the desserts, so like many whatever. Options. So the first thing I did, like I looked at the salad and I just didn't think it looked that great. So then I decided I was going to bypass the salad completely, and I got this kind of like they called it like um, Bourbon Street chicken. It kind of looked like Chinese kind of like style chicken to me, so it looked kind of good. And I was like, well, you know, that's mostly protein. It had the sauce. It was next to the broccoli, so I threw broccoli. Kind of created mm -hmm. like a broccoli beef, like Chinese kind of dish, and put some of the sauce on it. Yeah, that's, that's, that was good. And yeah. it, then it was right next to the fried chicken, though, which I just like. My eyes kept going to every right. time I went past it. And we'll get to your fried chicken too. Mine's right, bet. Right. Mine's healthier. And so that was kind of my like. Well, you know what? Like, I, like I just wanted it. So I got some fried chicken, and of course it was next to the mashed potatoes, and you can't have fried chicken without mashed potatoes, so I put that on there with the gravy. Mm -hmm. oh. And then this, this plate became, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, right, right, right. Um, well, first of all, what do you think about it? Well, you know what? I liked everything you picked, <laughs> okay. to be honest. And the, the one thing I held back on, I figured not, let's not get the mashed potatoes and gravy because they're filling, mm -hmm. and they're inexpensive. I can do that any old time. Right. I'm trying to get my money's worth, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, that buffet, to be honest, was nothing like the buffets at the hotels in Las Vegas. And those things make this one look like just uh, Denny's. <laughs> and it was, I'm, I'm kind of jealous, but I, I tell you what, I purposely picked a small piece of chicken. We're not talking about yours yet. I know, but you picked the biggest one. <laughs> I did in that the on tray. purpose because I was like, if I'm going to eat it, I'm going to get the biggest one there. No, I, I totally approve of well, what you Jenny, picked. Well, Jenny, what do you think? So. First, uh, like Jeremy mentioned, you know, if this is a once a year, or twice a year event for you, go for it. You know, there's no bad food. I always feel, and I you know, always discuss that with patients, food should be, you should enjoy it. It should be a balance. Um, you know, the whole 80-20 rule where 80% you're pretty healthy eating foods with purpose that are nourishing your body and the other 20% you can relax. So Jeremy, you did great, okay? Why? Because you went for the broccoli and, um, you know, I, have you ever heard the term eat the rainbow? No. No? Okay. So we try to incorporate more color to the plate uh, because the plants, for instance, uh, your fruits and vegetables, that color that they have, it's called the phytonutrients. It's the immune system. Exactly. <laughs> That's how you see, turn. See? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Exactly. <laughs> so those beautiful colors is actually the immune system of the plant, and it protects them from you know the external world. So when we eat these colors, it actually does great for us. It has anti-cancer properties, um, protects us from chronic conditions, uh, heart disease. Um, so the green actually has a lot of anti-cancer properties. So you did really good with but the broccoli. Even the overcooked dark green? Um, it's better less cooked because there's more nutrients, and that's a great point. Um, so steamed uh, is good. Sometimes even raw is better. Um, so then the the fried chicken, again, not an everyday kind of thing, but a, a grilled chicken would have been a better option, let's say. Um, and another, just to sympathize with you, not eating the entire day, ghrelin levels, which is our hunger hormone, starts to spike. So by the time you actually have access to food, it's very, very hard to make healthier choices. Mm -hmm. So I think that may have also played a big part in it. Yeah, I think honestly, like if I just had a snack or something before I went right, here, I right. would have gotten something completely different. Right. And a big reason for choosing the broccoli, because so. I knew it was just going to help fill me up, to right. be honest. Right, exactly. And it, like, you know, basically zero carbs. But if I just bought like, or just ate this, I would bolus pretty like eight to 10 units, mm -hmm. you know, like um, like the carbs are really coming from the mashed potatoes, but then all that protein and fat. So it'd be kind of tricky mm -hmm. uh, dosing insulin appropriately for, for this. If you're not on insulin, you know, a lot of the medications, certainly the GLP-1s yes. can help curb appetite. Yes. They've actually done studies 
that you, you actually always talk about this, where they let people with type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. go to a buffet and they pick out everything that they wanted and then gave them their first dose of a GLP-1 and let them go back to the buffet. And the, the stuff that they picked, the calorie count just went significantly down. Yes. So those medications can really help kind of curb appetite. The types yeah. of food they picked were exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Protein, fat, carbohydrates, but it was just the less. Portion. Yeah. Exactly. So I think now that I'm like slightly, you know, I'm not as hungry, honestly, I don't even know if I would have made it through this whole plate, but mm -hmm. we'll talk about my second plate next. So mm -hmm. um, this, honestly, I would have eaten this. <laughs> like, you know, I wasn't like, I knew you were going to be judging me, right, but I wasn't right. trying to be ridiculous. I wasn't trying to be like Mr. You know, Goody Two Shoes Diabetes right, right. Guy. It's real. Um, yeah. It's real. Yes. So let's talk about your plate, which is over here is like a. Well, I, of... I immediately thought of the rainbow okay. when yeah. I went through my first plate because I, I went to light and dark greens, oh a little bit of yellow. I love I went it. To red beans. Uh, no, to be serious, yes. um, I, I love salad. Maybe mm -hmm. a little more than you. I'm not sure. I, I go to. Um, salad buffets here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and this part of the salad bar, I think you missed it, or you purposely no, I saw ignored it. it. Yeah. But it, I got my salad the lettuce here. was fresh. Bad. These mm -hmm. little corn on the cobs, I got. Garb I love garbanzo beans, mm -hmm. kidney beans, mm -hmm. and uh, cucumbers are basically free. So then I love carrot salad. I hardly ever get it because mm -hmm. it's sweet. Mm -hmm. It's got a bunch of raisins in there, but I love it. And I figured, mm -hmm. hey, I'm at a buffet. And then lastly, I know it Picking tuna fish is strange, but I like tuna fish. Yeah. And so, I think it's strange. I think like some good. protein and yeah, yeah, with your salad. Perfect. I know you eat that a lot. So yeah. basically, I what I didn't put on this plate, because it, it was a couple hours ago we were there, I would have put on some blue cheese or ranch <laughs> dressing, <laughs> smothered. You would have put red dye in it for right, right. And, and, and then <laughs> um, And then I, I would have put more, you can't really see them, but I put a bunch of sunflower seeds. And they did have a bunch of bacon. Mm -hmm bits for mm. the salad. And I, I wanted to pour that on top, but uh, you know, I didn't want it to get too soggy, so I didn't. So it's it okay, Jenny, did he, yes. he did pretty So I thought it. of the rainbows. I didn't. He did, yeah. <laughs> 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 this is great. So um, you did great with this plate uh, for a few reasons. Yes, you do have the rainbow. You have your orange there, there's green, there's even hints of, of um, yellow. Uh, again, each phytonutrient has amazing properties for the body. So um, great job there. You also incorporated uh, low energy density foods. So that's your fruits and your vegetables and mainly your, your, your veggies here. So these are foods that are uh, large in volume, but low in the caloric uh, uh, value. So uh, those are essentially um, your fruits and vegetables. So they help you feel fuller, um, which is why if you would have eaten that plate first, by the time you would have gotten to the second plate, you probably would have eaten less. And what about that time? Like what if he sat down and was talking with friends? Is that helpful? Absolutely. If, if he ate this over eating 20 slow. minutes instead of five? Yeah. I mean, how helpful is that? Absolutely, yes. So eating mindfully where we're having a conversation with friends or you put down your fork, it takes sometimes even over 20 minutes for your brain to realize that you're actually full. So the hunger, uh, the satiety hormones, it takes a while for them to travel up to the brain. So if you're able to pace yourself or chew your food slowly, that actually helps significantly to eat less. You know, and I would say this, Jeremy and Jenny, that been to meetings where it's not really a buffet, you, can, you know, it's not really an all-you-can-eat buffet, but you go down once, you pick what you want, like at an advisory board meeting, right, right. and I, I always try to get the salad first, so mm -hmm. it prevents me from overeating later yeah. on. Mm -hmm. But I do like salad, and I yeah. thought that looked fresh for me, and yeah. I knew I'd get brownie points. It looks... <laughs> <laughs> it looks delicious. I mean, too. in the beginning, you said, like, I didn't do this because I knew Jenny was watching. I didn't. You know, I didn't. You're true color chef. No, no, I didn't. But, but the other thing we should say is that, you know, a lot of what we're talking about is kind of weight loss strategies. Right. And this pertains to everybody with diabetes. I mean, right. certainly we talk about it a lot in people with type 2 diabetes because mm -hmm. that lens runs so much with obesity. But most type 1s are either overweight or obese, so it's mm -hmm. a struggle for everybody. Right. So everybody needs to be kind of conscious of what they're eating. And there is no real diabetic diet. No. It's kind of eating healthy, how, like mindfully how you would, how yeah. anybody should eat. Yeah, this is, it's yeah. not a diet. This is how we should all eat. This is eat. not a diet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, this definitely is not a diet. <laughs> but, yeah, this is the, the seafood diet. Exactly. You see it and, and you, you eat it. it. Right. <laughs> all right, so I'm hearing that I got like a, I don't know, 10 out of 10, oh, Steve got no, like a no, 7. No grading. You, you, um, did, you did good. You can just put it up there. So maybe you can catch don't up take, in take the my second rainbow, round. <laughs> All right, why don't you start first this time, okay. Steve? All right, well, I'm still pretty hungry, to be mm -hmm. honest. I mean, I had low-density food. 
uh, although the tuna fish and the carrot salad is kind of dense. And I walked around quite a bit, mm -hmm. and I'll say right away, I went for fried chicken. Mm -hmm. And I did look for the smallest piece. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because he took the biggest piece. <laughs> uh, and then I went, I love meatloaf. Mm -hmm. So they had it all sliced there. I took two pieces, and I went to the carving station mm -hmm. and got a slice of ham. Mm -hmm. um, we had meatloaf in Vienna, remember? Was yeah. It, normally, it's supposed to be horse. In Vienna, yeah. yeah. But this is not horse. No, so anyways, I, I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, you know, the little round fried things, the mm -hmm. hush puppy was good. I mm -hmm. ate one while I was in line before they weighed the food. Of yeah, course. I was going to say, we probably got like 13 <laughs> pounds of food, but for the hush puppies that didn't make it to the, the yeah. weigh-in. I felt, I felt a little guilty because normally you can eat it in, while you're walking around because you're just, if you eat there, you get all you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, it's kind of like those candy things where you, you, that you weigh and you, you, know, and you pay, you, yeah. you eat a couple first. Um, oh then I, I did get a pile of this rice that looked really good. I know mm -hmm. it's all carbs, but and then I got kind of, I think kind of a sliced beef, I wouldn't call it a stew, but maybe kind of an Indian dish, maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I had, so I had, that was the only carbs in my plate, and a lot of protein. And I think there's probably a lot of carbs in the in the fried chicken, because batter, yeah. right? Exactly, yes, absolutely, yeah, there's a lot of carbs there. So, yeah, I out of the three macronutrients, um, the one that actually helps us feel fuller is protein. And the way that it does that is by actually increasing our own GLP-1, which you had referenced, um, the, some of the great medications that are available. Uh, in addition, because you have to chew it, so that requires more time to eat uh, the protein. So, like you said, definitely maybe the grilled chicken would have been a, a, um, a healthier option. Um, and you did have a good amount of protein there. Um, but yeah, I, I would say if there's fish or certain types of seafoods, um, I like that you added the beans. I'm from Dominican Republic, so rice and beans is kind of part of what, how we were raised <laughs> to eat. But adding maybe more of the beans, because there you have more fiber, uh, a little bit of uh, the combination of plant sources of protein, which is nice to switch it up, and then a little less on the rice. So, and maybe adding some of that beautiful salad you had there too. Well, Thank you. The other thing I was gonna say was good that you did. If you're on insulin, it can take a while for the, mm -hmm. the insulin to kind of kick in. Right. So Steve could have taken his insulin like when you sat down to eat your salad mm -hmm. and basically you kind of delayed the carbs That's that you're true. eating. So the carbs, you might have not eaten for 20, 30 minutes and by that time the insulin's definitely working versus I went right for the mashed potatoes. And even if I got my insulin dose right, I definitely kind of would have spiked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think delaying the carbs in the carb component of your meal right, right. is another like really helpful approach, especially if you're on insulin. You know, that, that's a great point because I probably didn't even think about that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. how often do we take our insulin early? Now, the other thing they had there, I, I like soup. I know you like soup I too. I love soup. The soup they had soup. there was like really thick. I was going to get it, but I didn't know how to like it was too. It. it was too far back. Oh, yeah. here. Yeah. But it was really thick clam chowder, oh, okay. and that's like three hundred calories a bowl, yeah. and it's filling. But nonetheless, um, yeah, you know, I, I think, I think I did pretty good on this plate. And mm -hmm. the one thing I did see the the roasted chicken, mm -hmm. and they took the skin off it. It mm -hmm. just looked like half dead. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, so I, it's full dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't go for it. And, you know, I, I like the skin. I know you're not supposed to eat it, but it does keep the moisture in when you're cooking. Mm -hmm. Well, can I do my plate now? Yeah. Okay. So this one, it's kind of funny because I feel like my eyes got smaller, meaning like my eyes were really big for this first round. And right. then I started to be a little bit more practical. Mm -hmm. So I got some salad. Like, it's kind of a sad salad because, like, I just didn't love, like, what they had. It just didn't mm. look that great. So I got some lettuce and some cheese and some bacon bits, which is my kind okay. of salad. Um, <laughs> And then they had this taco station, like a fajita station that looked really good. Yeah. I actually, I love mm -hmm. fajitas. Mm -hmm. So I basically kind of made fajitas, but without the tortilla. Um, so it's chicken and bell peppers and onions That's and some kind idea. of like beans. And then I didn't see the sour cream and salsa, but I definitely would have put that on. So it, it's, for me, like I, the, the part I like about the fajitas is the fajita stuff. Like mm -hmm. the tortilla isn't like, I don't absolutely need it. So that was something I kind of got rid of. So anyways, that's my plate. Yeah, that's great. And you have, those are refried beans? Then? Yes. Yeah, so again, good good sources of plant source, uh, plant uh, protein sources. And um, I like the, the, the changes there that you have in regards to like the peppers and the onions and, is that mushroom? Is there or, chicken in there? Is that There's chicken and like, I, I don't know if that's meat. 
or okay. a mushroom. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's good because, again, it's, you It's have still moving. <laughs> <laughs> Half dead chicken. <laughs> it's alive, yeah. yeah. So, but it's a good mix because, again, you have low uh, energy uh, density foods there, too, um, you know, which is essentially not a lot of calories. You have some good fiber, uh, water content as well with those veggies, um, and then the salad as well. So, yeah, and it, if you want to spice up your salad to make it a little bit more interesting, you could put berries or nuts, um, a little bit of cheese, uh, and a little bit of the bacon nuts. Uh, bacon uh, nips is not the end of the world. Either, yeah. So, yeah. All right. I think, I, you know, I'll, I'll say another winning round for Jeremy. Sorry, Steve. Now, let's get to the real, you know, issue when it comes to buffets. Mm -hmm. And we actually had different approaches to this, which I think is, is interesting. So... You know, you can't help but notice the dessert section. I mean, that's like a right. big part of any buffet. It's like, you know, they make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. And they had the soft serve ice cream, which normally I would have just gone straight to that. Put my head under the thing. <laughs> um, so I saw, like, I want to start with your plate against you because I saw his really? and I'm like, this is absurd. There's no way you would eat all of that. <laughs> and tell me what your response was. Yeah, well, I, I brought it back to try different mm -hmm. desserts. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like wasting food, but I also thought that I could share with other people at the table if it was good. But I love carrot cake, and I see mm -hmm. you picked that as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I did p get a piece of chocolate cake, but there was a slice that was someone cut in half already. Mm -hmm. I took that. I love red velvet. I'm not sure what this is, but it looked interesting. Like marshmallows dipped in chocolate. So what do you think about that, Jenny? Because I don't have a sweet tooth, so I actually do think that I could literally try each of these. But some people will say, like, you know, like if I have this in front of me, I'm going to eat it all. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. should you bring back stuff that you're not planning to eat, or is that setting you up for kind of failure? You're right, yeah. So serving it and bringing it to the table and, and you're having a conversation is very easy to just eat the entire thing, right. especially if you're so engaged, let's say, in the conversation that and kind of mindlessly, mindlessly yeah. um, eat it. So I would say maybe just choose what you feel like you really enjoy, which is probably the carrot cake, and take it with you and enjoy every bite. I feel like sometimes when we see sweets, because we, we restrict ourselves and we say, no, I can't have any sweets. And when you get your hands on the sweets, it ends up being too much. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself to have the sweet. Um, obviously, you know, by the time you get to that point, maybe you'll feel a little fuller and enjoy it. Pace yourself, you know, enjoy every bite. I beat you out on the salad, and then you turned her against me <laughs> because I had more desserts. I'm serious. Well, you I, said it was a good idea before she Well, got yeah, it. but then I thought about it. Jenny, like, do you think that's a bad idea? idea? Yeah, absolutely. And she goes, <laughs> yes. So, um... I don't believe um, it. Now I totally forgot what I was... Oh, I was glad that you You're said... You're my in, favorite. In, yeah, yeah. So, so, don't worry. There's no wrong you could do. <laughs> that's all he wanted to hear, so he's good. So I'm glad you said enjoy it, which mm -hmm. sounds kind of like, of course... But I think, like, you know, so often people will choose these things and eat them and just be kind of beating themselves right, up the whole right, time. It's right, like, well, right. if you're going to pick it, then allow mm -hmm. yourself to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, if you've already made that decision, kind of commit to it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. So, you know, just to kind of wrap it up, I got just the carrot cake. And I, like I said, I don't have a sweet tooth, so I actually would just try this a little bit. But this mm -hmm. was the, the thing that really jumped out to me as a dessert, and that's why I picked it. And obviously it's high calorie. But it's, you know, it's got rainbow in here. It's all yeah, kinds of there's colors. a lot the of color. It's, yeah. all, it's all frosting, but it's, you know. So, yeah, this is great. Because you, you made a decision, you saw everything, and you said, you know what, I like carrot cake, and I'm going to have that one, and you chose it. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's well, good. Well, I think, any closing comments, Jenny, for... Yeah, I'm not sharing with you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> that you want to leave our viewers with? Or? Yeah, I mean, I feel, you know, what we had mentioned earlier, um, you know, food shouldn't feel like it's forbidden or restrictive. I think the, the more we bring down that armor, um, the healthier we actually end up eating because mm -hmm. then it's, n it's no longer of, oh, I cannot have that. It's more of maybe I don't want to and maybe I feel better when I eat certain foods. So it's always good to check in with your body after eating certain foods. If you feel sluggish or maybe feel nauseous or bloated, you know, our body communicates with us with symptoms. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to take a take a moment and listen and reflect to see how you feel afterwards. I would just say if you want to hear more of us talking about weight management, especially in type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. we did, I think, our second podcast ever was mm -hmm. with Jenny um, on just that topic and weight management clinic. Mm -hmm. 
and then we just recorded one on, on weight loss and type 1s right. uh, that should be launching very, very soon. Yeah, and you and I did a lecture together yes. Yes. on the GLP-1. Yes. So a lot of good stuff mm -hmm. on our, in our video vault, so, in our podcast. Importantly, thanks for watching. Now we can turn off the camera so we can actually eat. We're not going to make you watch <laughs> us eat this stuff. Uh, but thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed Bye. it. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks.